Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. This is John from Texas. Hello, John. Dane will be with us tonight. He's got two radio shows. He, he's going to get on at right at uh, we start. So as soon as you get on, he'll only have one hour to speak. So we need to let him go first if everybody's okay with that. I'll uh, you whenever you need John. Okay. We, we, well, as soon as Dane gets on, uh, he'll let you know. And I just want you all to know that he doesn't have a lot of time tonight because he is between radio shows. So. Uh, thank you I'm very here, much. John. Whenever you say go, John, I'm here. Okay, Dane, thank you very much. All right, Dane. Good. Uh, let me see here. Hi, Dane. Bill and Angela. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. Um, John, I don't know if you have a particular tack you want to take, but I can... Uh, I can roll whenever you wish. I have a little bit of a rough connection on this, and I tried to get through a few times. It's still a little rough. Okay. Right. Well, just any time you want to take off talking, uh, spend your time wisely, please. Whoever's on here will listen. Please. Okay, and uh, Curry, you're on. All right, a lot of background noise. Hopefully okay. anybody on the call can, can move their calls so that the background noise can't be heard because there's quite a bit coming through now. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's there. take a minute to shake out here. Yeah, that's yeah. much better. Getting a little bit better there. Um, if 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 I hold on, if you want me to roll forward, John, I'll blast off, and we can get into questions and stuff. Then to try to get as much done as we can, the time allotted. Okay, hold on. Let me get the uh, recording turned on here. Steve, this conference is being recorded. Okay, uh, welcome everybody to this uh, special call. I, uh, this call is going to be um, all about solutions, and uh, Lord knows we need a lot of them. So we're going to going to put uh, Dane on here first, and and uh, let him uh, add whatever. Uh, uh, he wants to uh, in this uh, first hour, or, or for as long as he needs, to answer questions, to um, uh, you know, take suggestions, whatever. Um, and then after that, uh, uh, we will uh, go into a whole another uh, mode of conversation. Um, uh, I will bring bringing on several people to uh, participate in that. So, yeah, go ahead. Steve, we've got a, not only a lot of background noise, but it's a lot of cutout, like a bad connection or something someplace. Either that or somebody doesn't want us talking about this stuff. And it's the theory. same on this end. It's the same on this end. I tried several times to get through, and it was the same every time. Okay, let me let me try this. It's been that way every week, so I'm suspicious that somebody either doesn't want us talking about this stuff or we have a bad connection someplace. Well, we have hit the Achilles tendon now. <laughs> I brought it. Have y'all found out about it? It's, it's gone viral. Good. Okay, uh, anyway, this, no, this is okay. Wayne, and I yield. I just wanted to bring that to attention before we really get into things. There's just been a lot of breakup. Yeah, thank you, Wayne. A am I breaking up? Yes. See, it sounds real good on my end. Um, I hear you pretty good. Yeah. Dan, you're coming in clear. Most, most of us are coming in clear, but others are not. I know Dane sounds clear, John sounds a little rough, and Wayne sounds a little rough. Okay, yeah, the Dane. ones that are not sounding good, um, tell your location, see if we can zero in. Okay, Dane said he's not getting, he's getting breakup too. I got a lot of breakup off from you talking. So. Pennsylvania is bad. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but you sound clear, Mark. Yeah, you're breaking up, Dave. Yeah, right. So I'm going to experiment here and maybe it'll solve the solution now that we're on um, uh, record. Uh, let me Amy. drop off and call back in. Okay. okay. Everything, everybody sounds good to me. Okay, Steve, you you sound better than the others. Yours is still breaking up, but it sounded a lot better than others. It's a, it's a connection problem someplace, apparently. 
Yeah. No, from where I am, everybody that's talking is breaking up really bad, and I'm in California. Oh, well, that explains that. <laughs> Hi, Charlene. Welcome to the car. Hi. Thanks. This is my first time, so I'm looking forward to it. Uh, good. Do we want to... Is there anything we can do, or should we... Uh, well, um, best we can. The, uh, uh, the only thing I can do uh, on this end that might help that is uh, uh, put us into Q&A mode, uh, you know, and then uh, unmute you, Dane, and, and um, uh, Curry, and um, see if we can make the connection a little better than that. I, I hate to do it, but um, there just may not be any other way that it'll work. Do it, Rice. Okay, there, Mr. Rice. This is uh, Mr. Curry. I just dialed back in uh, and got a clear signal. No more breakup. So, uh, Mr. Bachman and anybody else experiencing that, just go ahead and dial back in. Okay, will do. Seems to be working. <coughs> okay. Okay. Uh, the other option uh, I was just saying, Steve, as you got on, is I'll put it into Q and A mode and and just uh, unmute you and, and Dane and myself. And, uh, oh, okay. We'll we'll try that. Okay. Um. Well, we'll we'll see how far we can get. All right, Steve. I want to let you know I did uh, call my good friend Vincent Finelli from USAPrepares dot com, and he posted this call on his website. So we may have a, a full house tonight. I hope. Well, uh, it's a uh, record attendance so far. What do we got? Uh, all right. 63. Awesome. I texted out to over 50 people, so hopefully they've all got on. Excellent. I posted it on the uh, Morgellon sites on Facebook this afternoon. Great job, Wayne. Yeah. I'm sorry I didn't do more in mind. I, I, uh, we have people on from Mars as well. I didn't post it uh, too far and wide. We would have had a whole lot more. I didn't realize the posting was going to go on. Like I'm glad it did. I'm fine with that. But I, uh, we would have had even more if I would have got that up in time. But that's okay. We can we can repost it after the fact. So that's that all right. Yeah, you can you yeah. can always send them the recording link. We will. And if you guys, uh, you, I, I'm hearing a little bit better now. So you guys uh, say when, and I'll like, I'll just make a quick statement. I, I I'd like to have open for Q and A so that I can try to answer questions for people as to why this issue should be the the absolute priority for what we face. Very good. Mr. Rice, uh, if you want to do your house cleaning, I'll do mine, and then we'll let uh, uh, let Mr. Dane have the line, have the um, floor. Yeah, uh, just just real quickly, and, and uh, first we, we do have uh, new callers on here. I try to keep uh, everybody's uh, line open. Uh, I try not to put it into Q&A, uh, but if we are experiencing uh, either background noise or if you're you know, talking over other people, um, uh, I will I will mute you. Uh, and then I'll come back and unmute you after, uh, you know, a few seconds or so. Just, But, uh, um, you know, there's just, uh, we're getting so many people on the calls and there can be so much background noise and, and uh, it, it just gets uh, hard for everybody to hear. Uh, so... I'm going to keep it open uh, as long as I can. Uh, if we get you know too many people trying to talk at the same time, then um, I will be forced to put it into uh, Q and A mode. Uh, so, and then you'll just have to press star six to get into the queue. Um, other than that, um, I suspect this is going to. Well, I know this is going to be a very different call tonight than we uh, normally have on Friday nights. Uh, and uh, this is about coming up with solutions, uh, and we will be uh, offering more on that end after uh, uh, Dane gets through with, um, you know, his his uh, uh, comments. So, Mr. Curry, you may take it away, sir. Yes, sir. Well, thank you, Mr. Rice, and uh, Mr. Dayton, thank you so much for joining us, and I do believe we have uh, Mr. Hartford and Van Dyke on as well. We have Mr. Bachman and uh, John, and everyone is welcome to this call, and as far as my housekeeping, um, anyone listening on this line that uh, would like to 
figure out how to take advantage of us um, when we speak the truth, have at it. Uh, we're here to help you understand what the heck is going on in this world. And we're just asking you to do the very right thing. Whether you are working for the NSA, uh, we don't care. Uh, because it's going to be really up to you to make the changes at NSA. Um, talk to your supervisors. Let them know that we're not the enemy. That we're actually your friends. And we are your uh, next door neighbor. And so uh, if you want to try to pick us apart, have at it. You'll not find anything that's uh, prosecutable here. So um, on that note, uh, as Mr. Rice explained, we are all about solutions. Uh, there's been enough rhetoric floating around for a long time. But the one thing we do have advantage uh, over our enemies is the fact that we are communicating, we are merging. Uh, there is a synergy going on here that is unbelievable. And it's nothing that can be destroyed, nothing that can be challenged. It is uh, we the people, for those that want to put it into that vernacular or into that venue. Uh, we all are individuals, and it is up to the individual to make a statement, to make a stand. And we stand for uh, getting our country back and taking our planet back from those who would want to destroy it. That's probably a good segue to um, uh, for, for Mr. Dane. Mr. Dane, you have the floor, sir. Hey, Steve. If, if I could make a quick about a 90-second statement here, then I'll back off, and we can go to go to Q and answer people's questions. But my gratitude to everyone on this call. The, the gravity of the climate engineering issue, the immediacy of this issue, the immediacy of the threat it poses to all of us cannot be overstated, as we discussed before. I had a conversation earlier in the day with a prominent member of your group in Texas, and he suggested that I communicate less rapidly so that all can fully understand, and I, I certainly I can't argue with him on that point. He's absolutely correct, and I, I am aware of this fact, and I do tend to push out data very quickly, and I'll try to find a balance between adequately expressing the unfolding planetary and geopolitical catastrophes that we're, we're facing right here, right now, and, and try to present data in a slower fashion. It's, it's difficult when you're watching the sand sift out of the hourglass and you're screaming at the top of your lungs and, and not enough people have heard yet, so please forgive me when I do try to log data too fast. The purpose of this call is to make clear the full nature of what we face from the ongoing atmospheric operations, the fallout of which each and every one of us is breathing with every breath we take. And, and to answer any related questions, also, another purpose of this call, from the legal representatives that are on this phone and listening in, we have on this phone line a number of attorneys, and we also have the CEO of the world's largest environmental consulting firm is on the phone now, is listening into this conversation. To, to set the stage, another purpose of this call, to set the stage for the appropriate parties that will be a part of the ongoing effort to file suit, hopefully in multiple states, with a, a template that okay. does not have to be reinvented from state to state. There may also, by the way, be some representatives from Rhode Island on this call as well, some that participated in the drafting of the legislation there. But to connect the appropriate parties that they might carry on in a private discussion this Thursday evening, at a time to be agreed upon, and a call that would not be publicized. It must be an attorney client type for privacy on that call while their ongoing proceedings unravel. Uh, so, uh, on the biosphere, again, from all around the globe, for those that aren't looking, we, we're seeing events that we have not seen before. Right now in India, in the last few days, about 1,500 people have died. Temperatures in the mid-125 degree range, asphalt melting, Siberia is burning to the ground. Yes, the eastern U.S. is cool, but that's the most anomalously cool place on the planet. They're trying desperately to hide the gravity of what's unfolding. The weather at this point must be seen as completely manipulated. There is no quote-unquote natural weather. So in regard to events like what's happening in Texas right now, the unprecedented flooding there, if the geoengineers did not want this flooding to occur, it would not have occurred. They have that much technology, enough to shut down 
largely shut down the precipitation. They can aerosolize it, scatter it with radio frequency. And just as so they've done to California for the last seven years, they can shut that flow largely off if they chose to. So we have two sides to the sword with the weapons that the geoengineers have at their disposal. Deluge or drought and many things in between, but they're both two sides of the same sword. It's all weather warfare. Weather warfare can't be separated from biological warfare. Again, two sides of the same sword. We'll finish with this. None of us can come to accurate conclusions if we do not examine at least a reasonable amount of this, this data on the subject. There are numerous PowerPoint presentations on the homepage of geoengineeringwatch.org specifically for this purpose, and these presentations are fast-moving, data-packed, and I, I hope all will take a time to examine this without taking some time to, again, have a basis for our opinion that we can't have a solid opinion. And, and the, the gravity of this issue, again, it cannot be overstated. It is the logical priority issue over all others. It's the greatest threat we face. This is a mathematical fact, short of nuclear cataclysm, which we may face at some point. But this is the most immediate right now because we're, we're breathing in everything they're spraying. It's decimating the hydrological cycle, the biosphere, the planetary life support system. So uh, I'll turn this back over to you guys. I'll answer as many questions as I can. And again, uh, after this meeting, I'll exchange contacts with John Garrison and that we can then connect up the appropriate parties that can press on with the, the formulation of uh, legal maneuvering for this issue. If I may have a first question, this is Nelson. I'd like to start it off with an important question, I believe it to be. Go ahead, Nelson. Okay, thank you, Mr. Curry. My understanding, is, sir, is that uh, you're looking to see about getting this into the courts and to taking some action to stop them via our, our courts. What I all, the only thing I have to say about that is the courts are the same people who are performing the chemtrail action and the war against people, we the people. I don't agree that we should put it into the lion's cage that is actually causing the problem. The courts and the chemtrail people are the same people, the same agenda. I will yield there. No argument at all on that point, and I should have clarified, forgive me for not, but the primary purpose of a legitimate, credible filing is to gain the appropriate media coverage that would be possible for them to hide at that point, and that is the primary purpose. I fully agree with you on what you have just stated, but once we reach critical mass, and I believe this is the greatest step we can take toward reaching, reaching that critical mass, to have a credible filing with credible data that the media can no longer ignore, ignore that would unite so many different communities in this particular battle, and that is the primary purpose. I fully agree with you. Well, if, if I may address that, that issue up to that point, this critical mass that you speak of is right on your menu. It is they want to cause havoc and confusion. Uh, they don't care. They really don't care. They want to make as many people angry and fighting each other and dead eventually. These people do not care. They are the corporation. They are the criminals of the world. We all know the names. I do not agree at any degree to go into their courts or their jurisdiction at all. There are other avenues for that. I do understand your concern. It is valid. But your solution is taking it to them where they tear apart, milk it out for years, and will not help us at all. I would like to respond to that. Regardless of what happens in the court, regardless of what maneuverings are taken to try to stop this issue or this proceeding, because this is a national security issue, this praying will be classified as national security. Regardless of any outcome judicially, the simple fact that this will put us on the radar as a credible, undeniable issue, facts to be presented through discovery, that alone, the media coverage, the uniting of various communities on this issue, that this is a legitimate issue. So that people like, for example, about 20 hours ago, Kaylee Jenner, who's quite well known, Bruce Jenner's daughter, went on the record with this issue. The media is trying to pick her apart right now because there hasn't been enough credible support from, for example, the legal community or other environmental communities. This effort would unite those communities. People from 
from various organizations, environmental organizations that have so far steered clear because they haven't had enough support, would now get that support. We can catalyze a number of camps in this fight, if you will, by this proceeding. So it's it's not necessarily relevant wherever a judicial action does or doesn't go. The simple fact that it's filed and we can start moving forward with large events based on that filing and catalyzing communities and camps in this issue, we, we must try this type of immediate action because time is not on our side. I want to stress that mathematically, and I challenge anybody to investigate every word I'm saying, time is not on our side. We have biosphere implosion occurring by the day right now, and I can back up that statement. I'm going to make this my last, uh, my last exposure to a question. Uh, what you're suggesting there, I understand fully. I don't disagree with you. What I'm saying is another solution other than the courts, the, the corporate courts, uh, go to common law. Uh, that, that's being created. People's law, natural law, uh, uh, set up forms around the country, legitimate forms without any thugs for the corporation, send it out on the media. Cause it to happen by popular demand. Do not go to the courts. They will hound and bombard you. They ultimately get in their way. And I'm going to yield. I will not bring up another. If I can reply to that, I do. I appreciate your, your statement. What's all that legal to go to side? What is his name? Uh, that was Nelson, and uh, we have Dane, who is... Uh, Nelson was just uh, talking. Nelson uh, was just talking. The person that's just talking was uh, Nelson. Nelson what? Yeah. Nelson, Nelson, Nelson will work. Yeah. Nelson, Nelson who? Will work. <laughs> Nelson, Nelson who? You wanna, Nelson, you want to give him your name? Yeah, you already mentioned there, Mr. Kerr. My, my last name is Scott. Nelson Scott. Nelson Scott. I'm Hartford Van Dyke. Dr. Van Dyke. Okay. Hartford Van Dyke. I'm interested. Can anyone jump in on this? I'm interested uh, in talking with you some more, Mr. Scott. Hang on. Hold on. I'm sorry. There was uh, some over-talking. I couldn't quite make out what you said. I said I would like to talk with Mr. I would like to talk with Mr. Scott at some time. My telephone number is 509 738 3039. Okay, you caught me by surprise. Uh, we'll get you connected. We'll get yeah. you connected, Nelson. And, uh, no okay, thank you. Uh, very good. Let's go on to the next question um, uh, for Mr. Dane. If I could give one quick response to Mr. Scott. Again, I don't disagree yes. with him, and I'm not against other wheels turning at the same time, but I would, as far as what is judiciously worth pursuing, I would I would turn that over to the attorneys involved. There are some very sharp ones involved at this point. And there are, again, again, we have the CEO for the largest environmental consulting firm in the world in this call. This is all he does. He, he knows how to maneuver in these arenas. And when these minds collaborate, I believe what they come up with will help us to put the the blip on the radar with this issue that can no longer be ignored, that can no longer be marginalized. And once we put a crack in the dam, and this is again what I would argue, if we simply put a crack in the dam, if we show that this is a credible issue and we can do that, there will be no stopping the flow of water at that point if we can crack the dam. We'll have people, scientists, academicians, some of whom I know, coming from the shadows. They're, they're desperate to talk about this issue. They simply need some cover, and we need to provide them okay. some cover. Yeah. That's right, Mike. Okay. Uh, uh, what, you, what you say is absolutely true. I am not trying to stop you from going. You want to go to the, the corporate courts? That's going to be another outlet. What I'm saying is let's not make that the only avenue because it will be shut down. All energy must be put to other avenues at the same time. Media, TV, radio, doctors, posters. Don't play a simple game like they want you to do. We're in complete agreement on that point. We're, we're in complete agreement on that point, Mr. Scott. And we'll, we'll, I'm open to any suggestions. We're trying to exhaust every avenue, and we are in complete agreement on that point, sir. If I may. You, you have, we are the people. We are the ones that built this country. And we are the ones that will make the solution. Do not let them push us, the leaders, the authority of the country, away or around. 
stand ground, people will join you. I yield. Steve, if Very I good. may. Mr. Buckman, I believe you had to comment. Yes, thank you. I heard somebody trying to walk in on this conversation, and it is the same individual who walked on me and Dane last week. And there's also another individual who is notorious for walking on people, who I've also had run-ins with on Randy's program. I think we need to have a firm ground rule here that there is to be no walking on top of other people, no interrupting. When you interrupt people, it, it is rude and discourteous to the person who's talking. Last week, I was trying to listen to Dane, and he got interrupted by somebody. And then I was talking, and somebody interrupted me. And what that does is it, it makes it impossible for people to get the complete message which causes misunderstandings. And and that's really a hot button with me. Last week when I was trying to listen to Dane, and, and I was intently listening to him, and this other guy from Oregon walked in on it, I, I think we need to have some firm ground rules that there's to be no walking on top of people, no interrupting. Thank you for that. Uh, I, your note is well taken. Thank you. Uh, to all parties, to all parties, uh, we will not uh, bring you on the line if you do not say, if I may, sir. All right? And that's just going to be the courtesy from now on, if I may, sir. And then if there's still people talking, and please don't do that over someone else's talking, wait for a break, if I may, sir. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get you... We'll get your message, and uh, we'll bring you up. But uh, <coughs> as Mr. Rice says, if you if you continue, we're just going to have to mute you, and we're going to go on without you. So uh, the next question for Mr. Dane, please. If I may, sir. You may, sir. This is uh, Francis Mandel. I've known Dane for years. I do the scientific data for him, and I'm just trying to say that I'm here if I need it. Okay, hold on, hold on here, sir. I, I need to make one more correction here, one more house cleaning. Mr. Rice, uh, do you have a lead on who's making all that background noise? Uh, yeah, but uh, the problem is, like, there's a two-second delay, and then they're gone. Uh, and so I can't, I can't pick out which one it is. Okay, somebody's washing dishes, and those people washing dishes are doing something else and not being attentive to the call. Uh, you're welcome to uh, hang up now, because we don't need all that distraction, or, please. Or you can just mute yourself. Or mute yourself until you're done with your dishwashing. Yeah. Is that clear? I could, if I may speak, have a, a response to Francis. This is Dane. Yes, oh, please. Hi, Dane. Dane. Francis, uh, I just want to state who Francis is, and then I, I want to uh, make another point to back up on what Mr. Scott said. Francis is a 35-year former U.S. Forest Service biologist. He supplied an extreme amount of credible data. He will be extremely important in the ongoing proceedings, his testing. We have a number of academicians involved with this, so Francis is one of those, and I salute his courage to, for stepping forward. And again, if we can get this issue to the light of day, we will have many Dr. is showing us back to Mr. Scott's appropriate suggestion of exploring every avenue, and I, again, fully agree with him. We have other people, for example, Sean Stone, Oliver Stone's son, is involved with this issue. Uh, I have communication with him. We have some other national TV talk show people involved, and if we're, we're back to that notoriety that if, if we could proceed with this filing in hopefully one or more states, then that would help a lot of those other wheels start to turn that Mr. Scott mentioned. So, you know, this is all sort of connected. And if we can start these these uh, pebbles rolling down the hill, we're going to start an avalanche. Yes, sir. Thank you for that. And I, I want to add here, uh, or request uh, to Francis, if you'll get in touch with us through... Uh our website, which is uh, clwestslope.com, and just send an email. No, 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 no. You got him confused. Mr. Rice, go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I shall do that. clwestslope.com. No, well, uh, Mr. Rice uh, has a connection for you. Yeah, that, that, that's not correct. Um, it's clwest, 
W E S T Slope S L O P E at Gmail dot com. Got it. Thank you, sir. You bet. Very Thank good. You. Well, uh, we'd love to connect with you and love to put you into the uh, the mix here. And the reason I say that, your service, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, the reason I say that is that um, uh, we are merging with a number of different talk show hosts around the, the world, and uh, we can get your message as well as Dane's, as well as uh, garnering the attention of a lot of celebrities. And I know that's where you guys want to go. That's where we need to go. Uh, the more celebrity spokespersons or individuals that we can get the better off uh, Dane's program and yours. Uh, sounds like you put that out. Tremendous amount of work, and you're a part of uh, Dane's entourage and, and, and that committee. So let's consider merging with all of these other assets that we do have. So um, did you have anything to add, uh, Francis, before? Uh, this data is available. I have... Many observations. I would ask the question, sir, is much of this is highly credible observations I have made myself, and I wonder if that's as valid as the hard uh, um, rain gauge geophysical data that I've taken. Well, that day, what, Francis, if I, if I may, what I'm going to do, uh, Mr. Curry, is after the conference call, I'm going to mail a key set of contacts Francis is one. I'll get them to you guys through John, and uh, I will put a complete list together. So Francis, you'll be on that, and we can cover particular data uh, in, a, in a future call. But Francis has a lot of exceptional data, and we have uh, a couple other biologists as well, former California fishing game. I'll get that whole list, uh, Mr. Curry, to you. That would be awesome. Thank you, Dan. Uh, thank you, sir. Some of the data is also of international scope, so... It, there's a lot of it out there. Excellent. Excellent. Well, we look forward to all of that data and uh, all the number of contacts because this is how we're going to solve it. Uh, let me throw this in real quickly. We're trying to merge our court observers in for Dane, for Francis. Uh, we can actually be calling executives of Monsanto and DuPont. I think I mentioned that last week. Uh, and we can just tie up their phone lines so much that they can't even do business unless they uh, are talking to us. So they're going to have to put down their business on a few days a week just to respond to the emails, phone calls, and faxes that we're going to give them. So this is another avenue. This is another approach. And so this is what we'd like to do for, for you and all of us. So uh, anything more, uh, Dane or Francis? Does somebody else have a shot at it, sir? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, next question, please. If I may, sir. You may, sir. Okay, my name is Horace Stewart, and I'm trying to wrap my head around the urgency. Maybe I joined the call only last week, and um, I'm trying to understand the urgency to communicate to the, the people at large why we need to be... Um, why time is of the essence. Um, well, if I may respond to that. If, if my supports, uh, if mathematically speaking, if we examine all the ongoing and unfolding consequences directly related to climate engineering, if these programs continue, mathematically speaking again, we have a very short time horizon. We're currently losing two to three hundred species of plant and animal a day. There are many causes for that, I grant that. But if we look at the full ramifications of atmospheric spraying, and again, I'm not sure how much you know about climate engineering, but I encourage you to investigate. I won't go into great detail here. But it's contaminating the entire surface of the planet, every breath we take, disrupting the hydrological cycle. And these programs are being used for weather warfare, for biological testing, if there's been going on, and the fallout alone from these programs makes it biological warfare. So we're seeing a complete disruption of the hydrological cycle, again, shredded ozone layer. There's every single aspect of the web of life is being torn apart by these programs. So if we're breathing this material in, this gets right to home for each of us, 
every breath we take is, is laden with this material. We know that from lab testing from around the globe. That will reduce our cognitive ability. It is reducing it. We're already seeing Alzheimer's and dementia. One in three seniors in the U.S. dies with one or both of those ailments, not just from it, but dies with it. We're seeing cognitive dysfunction go off the scale, respiratory mortality off the scale. Greatest single source of atmospheric particulate pollution right now is these programs. It's contaminating everything, bioavailable particulates, soils, waters, our air. This is a fight for life. So I encourage you to investigate the issue further, and you'll see why rationally and mathematically this issue is of grave importance, certainly the priority. And um, may I ask, if I may, sir, May I ask, um, who is behind these programs? We have um, a number of players involved with climate engineering. We know that Russia and China are involved. China has admitted their involvement on the record until about 2010. We know the NATO countries are involved. We've had leaders of Middle Eastern countries on the floor of the UN stating publicly that their meteorologists are making clear that NATO weather modification programs are droughting out their country. And we have seen the same pattern in every single country that's destabilized. So we do have so many connecting dots to indicate, again, Russia, China, the major players, U.S. NATO, the biggest of all, involved with these programs. So if we're, if we're talking about uh, the primary players, Department of Defense certainly has to be the hub for these programs. No one else can coordinate them. And we see we have film footage of military tankers spraying at altitude, KC-10s, KC-135, C-17s, up close film footage, inarguable. So now we can discuss who's funding the military. And I think that road leads back to those who print the money. And there's really no way around that. All roads, all roads eventually lead to those who control the flow of money. And that's what you will lead as well. So if I may, sir, the, my understanding, I read an article back in the 90s where they are saying that this, the source of this control, environmental control, is from extra low frequency generating plants that requires a ton of power to do this. So <laughs> I, I'm just thinking, why can't we find where the power stations are? Because they said it blew out one of the mountains along the uh, east-west um, lines of these ones in the United States. And why can't we find the power plant and just blow them up? Uh, I'm not going to enter into that discussion. I'm, we we okay. need the U.S. military on our side. Now, one, uh, in regard to the, the frequency transmissions, you are correct about that. Fre stations like HARP, High Frequency Active Rural Research Program, that's a facility in Alaska. It's, it's a ground-based radio frequency transmitter. Those transmitters are used to manipulate the atmospheric particulates. There's about two to three dozen of these large brace ground facilities around the globe. There's an unknown number of mobile facilities called SBX radar. But I, I will not enter into that type of discussion of militant action in that manner. I, I distance myself from that. We need the U.S. military on our side, period. Sure. Our U.S. military yeah. brothers and sisters knew, if they knew, and they don't know, if they knew that they were being used against their own countrymen, and we, this is why we need to reach critical mass, they would not participate. Enough of them would not participate. And I'm hearing from some of these people, and they know right. okay. the world is traveling fast. And again, that's that's why we need to reach critical mass. We need our military brothers and sisters to understand they're being used against their own countrymen. That's why critical mass is so important. Yes, sir. Uh, very good. Uh, Mr. Horst, uh, did, did you have one more question for um, um, for Dane? Yeah, well, um, uh, so who do I get in touch with? Like, this is one forum, but I mean, when I have on the phone, my, my, my head's going to be spinning, and I need to be in touch with some kind of feedback mechanism to say that our efforts are continuing, and our efforts are growing, and our efforts are having an impact. So who do we communicate with to know that our little cell, little cell on this call is actually doing some um, growth and, and, and evolution towards the direction of informing the, the, the powers that be that what they're doing is, 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 is being assisted ignorantly um, by, I guess, taxpayers' taxpayers' money? 
If I may, uh, there are several uh, avenues and several venues of which you can join. Number one, uh, Mr. Dane is uh, very prevalent on Facebook right now. Uh, go and view his videos that he's got posted up there. Uh, like those videos and share them with uh, uh, your family, friends, colleagues. The second avenue is to connect uh, directly to us at clwestslope at gmail.com, and you can get on our mailing list. Uh, if we need to repeat that, we will. No, I have, I have the company in this now. I, I got I need for, for okay. Horace, I'm sorry, I apologize. Horace, also, I just want to add before we lose you, uh, the, our website is geoengineeringwatch.org. There's no advertising, no politics. Uh, you can no. find data there also. If I may, sir. Uh, you may, sir. Go ahead. Thank you, Horace. This is Dave in the Thumb. Uh, you know, you can always talk to me, and we have this call every Friday night. So, you know, that's yeah. a great place to meet up and, you know, uh, check out our continuing efforts and bring new people to the call. Thank you. Definitely, definitely. Okay, that's that's the kind of thing involve, involvement I want to have. So, um, I'm 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 set. I'm set. Thank you, Horst. Um, Thank you. Let's uh, bring in our next uh, uh, person with a question for Mr. Dane. If I may, sir. You may, sir. Uh, this is Don in Wilmington, Delaware. Uh, I I got on the call a little bit late. Uh, I was just uh, curious uh, if we get everyone in the United States to uh, clean up the environment. How do you propose uh, to get, uh, as you stated earlier, uh, uh, China and Russia? We've we've pretty much failed at uh, getting. Uh, uh, Russia and the, the old uh, Soviet uh, Union to clean up uh, their uh, nuclear uh, uh, weapons. That's an accident waiting waiting to happen. Uh, do you propose like another group, another uh, similar to the United Nations, to have like a, a united group for the environment to to assist in a worldwide uh, uh, cleanup, or what? What, what stage? W w where do we go from here? First, I would I would state this: that if we can expose this issue and the populations of Russia and the populations of China, also like the populations of the U.S., realize that they have all been irreparably poisoned. I would argue that our paradigm will shift to a degree that few can imagine. That we are close to societal collapse right now. So that's why the maneuvering of the power structure with operations like Jade Helm, the upcoming military operations, they are putting their chess pieces in place. The same thing is happening in some of the other major superpowers. If we can get this issue to light in the U.S., it will come to light in those countries as well. And I would argue that we are going to see a massive paradigm shift in regard to nuclear contamination. Russia is horrible. China has been a disaster as well. So has the U.S. The U.S. is using depleted uranium ammunition with a radioactive half-life of four and a half billion years for practice off the California coast, off the U.S. West Coast, and now in the Gulf of Alaska. I've spoken to the U.S. Navy's PR person myself, who very cavalierly stated this fact that they're using depleted uranium ammunition. So we have no responsibility in any of these camps. The U.S. is spreading radioactive material around the globe. Obama just approved $6.5 billion to build more nuke plants in Georgia, while we have Fukushima that may kill us all. So those are problems we must face, and they are immense problems. But again, I would argue, with climate engineering, if we don't stop the atmospheric aerosol spraying, the spraying of these toxic heavy metal particulates, aluminum, barium, strontium, if we don't stop our exposure to those toxins, none of us will be healthy enough or thinking clearly enough to address any battle. So we're simply trying to take one hurdle at a time, but that's the biggest and most important and most immediate. Okay, th thank you. It's first time uh, calling, but uh, you all raised very, uh, very important uh, and interesting questions. Very good. Uh, and that was Don, sir? Don from uh, Wilmington, Delaware. Very good, Don. Welcome to the call, sir. And uh, please do uh, invite a friend and uh, join us on Friday night as well. I was, uh, I was invited by a, a friend that, uh, uh, to, that listens to you all. Very, very good, sir. Thank we you. Appreciate, we appreciate your friend. All right, next caller. Uh, next uh, question, please. May I ask a question? 
Uh, next question for Mr. Dane. If I may. Perfect. Oh, sorry. You may. Okay, yeah, this is Wayne again. Dane, out there where I live in eastern Oregon, I used to go splice telephone lines out by Christmas Valley, out throughout the Christmas Valley area. There is an antenna array out there that I was told was used for detecting submarines back during the World War II area, era. I am suspicious that that might be part of the HARP program. Do you know anything about that array? That particular facility, I don't, but they're building them as fast as they can. As they can. This is an absolute race of insanity toward certain human extinction if they continue. Today and yesterday over Texas, we saw massive RF frequency signature in the clouds. It's very easy to see. The clouds align themselves on radar as if you put iron shavings on a glass table and put a magnet below it. This is a very recognizable signal. We are being bombarded with so much radio frequency right now, it's a wonder that any of us are, are still cognitively functional. We're all like walking antennas because we're more conductive. Our bodies are absorbing these metal particulates. We, we know this. We have international experts that are speaking out about this absorption because these particles are so small, they enter through the lung lining, go straight into the bloodstream where they adhere to cell receptors like a plaque. So what you're seeing, this facility in Oregon, certainly is likely another one of these facilities. And we have an unknown number of smaller RF transmitters, NEXRAD radar, all over the country. They are bombarding the atmosphere with radio frequencies, which is nothing more than microwaving the atmosphere. So it's likely what you're seeing is a part of these facilities, yes. Okay, thank you, Dan. I yield. Hey, Dan, I've got a question. Um, next question. Yes, yeah, thank you. Dan, this is Danny from Toronto, Canada. I think you're speaking with you again. Dane, the the Hello? Uh, Hold on, Danny we've Street. got, uh, we've got uh, Dan on the line from uh, Canada. Hold on, please. Anybody Go ahead, uh, Dan. Hi. Dane, this is Danny from Toronto, Canada. Pleasure to speak with you again. Dane, the trees here are dying. And I have two questions. One is, why are so many young saplings not taking and two is, why do the tops of the trees lose their leaves first? I am seeing a mass die-off here in Toronto. Nobody seems to notice, but the tops of the trees are all losing their leaves first. I was wondering if you could help explain that. Thank you for the question. There's a number of aspects that we know would affect the symptoms you described. One, we're seeing soils being saturated with bioavailable metals. That means the Contamination particulates are so small, they're absorbed by all plant life. We know the effect of metals like aluminum on root systems. It causes organisms to stop nutrient uptake, which means they either do not grow or they die. In regard to the loss of foliage, loss of limbs in the tops and the foliage, we're seeing UV levels that are absolutely off the charts. UVB levels, a thousand percent higher than we are being told. So we're, we're being exposed to UV levels that are quite dangerous, and it's burning. It's literally scorching the trees. We're seeing the Cambrian layer, the bark, scorched off of trees on the sun-exposed side. It's killing plankton. It, it stops plant germination in many cases. The, the effects of this excessive UV is, is immense and extremely dangerous, and we can relate this right to climate engineering. We have science study that proves saturating the atmosphere with particulates will destroy the ozone layer. No ozone layer, no life on Earth. That's very simple. So, again, from every direction, and the climate engineering is tearing the planet's life support systems apart. And now when we add the radio frequency, which we have peer-reviewed study as well, also highly harmful to all living organisms, it's a very lethal mix. And when you blend these metals together, they... they cause what's called synergistic toxicity, so they become exponentially more toxic when these metals are blent together. So it's what we face, again, is nothing short of a fight for life. Should, should we start seeing much higher levels of skin cancer with these high we, radiation levels? We already are. Yeah. Much higher. Much higher. We're seeing plankton decline. To add one more issue, a lot of things are killing plankton. I don't argue that. But 
if we look at this mathematically again, we know these UV levels are so intense, and by the way, we're seeing even UVC on the surface. UVA, highest bandwidth of radiation, then UVB, then UVC, then X-ray. We all know how dangerous X-ray is. We're seeing UVC on the surface now, which we are told stops 100,000 feet up in the atmosphere. We're detecting it on the surface now. So we're seeing plankton die off. It's cataclysmic. Global plankton stocks are now down 50 to 60 percent. Plankton produces 50 plus percent of the Earth's oxygen content. Global oxygen percentage atmospherically is plummeting, again, from every direction. Climate engineering is pulling the noose around our collective necks, period. Thank you, Dane. And the reduction in uh, plankton, um, Dane, would affect the ocean's ecosystem, as in what do whales eat, what do uh, uh, these bottom feeders eat uh, that are predated in the cycle all the way up to our sharks and whatnot. So plankton is an important uh, canary in the coal mine. And when we see a reduction in that, we know we're in trouble. We you are correct. To, uh, we, we need to make some corrections there. Yes. Um, very good. Uh, next question, please. Hello, hello, sir, if I may. You may, sir. Hello, this is Sam Chaney calling from Fresno, California. And I had a question for the attorneys on the line. Can we use the Equal Access to Justice Act to uh, go ahead and, uh, and carry forward with the legal action about this geoengineering? Wow, good question. Uh, Dane, do you have an answer to that? That would fall on the, the legal arena. And Sam, if you wish to connect in the, or pose that question or have it posed in the call that will involve the legal people on the line, which would be Thursday night, uh, if you can get that to me, we can make sure that that question is posed to them. They would be the appropriate people to answer that particular question. But thank you for bringing it up. And I, uh, Yeah, because sure that's, what the, that's what the uh, environmentalists are using in, like, say, for example, uh, Endangered Species Act uh, lawsuits against the federal government. So, I mean, if they use it for that, then I don't see why we couldn't use it for this issue as well. You may be right, and that would that would fall again on the, on the legal team. And if, if you can get that to me and we can communicate about that, I'll make sure that that gets through to the call on Thursday night. I'll be on that call as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Yes. Yes, Sam, uh, while we have you, um, make sure you connect with us. Um, you can actually send your question in to us here at uh, clwestslope at gmail.com, and uh, we can store and archive that question and <clears throat> see if we can get you some response from um, uh, either the legal side or the lawful side. There are two... There are two major differences there. So no, yeah, I get it all, but I'm saying in their corporate system, then um, this is what this is what the neo environmentalists, what, however, whatever semantic wording you want to use, this is what the people that are fighting Endangered Species Act lawsuits right now are using. So I don't see why we couldn't use the same thing to sue the federal government. Joe, okay. uh, Tim, there are some environmental attorneys that are that are going to be connected with this effort, so um, hopefully they'll be able to elaborate on that more, and again, thank you for bringing that up. Okay. All right, thank you. Very good. Um, We've got about uh, five okay. minutes left for Mr. Dane. Uh, how about two more questions for Mr. Dane? If I may, sir. You may, sir. This is John Garrison. Hi, John. Okay, Dane, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to relay to them that Anything that you send legally goes to straight to Scott Curry or Scott Rice, and anything that composes to books or any other information to Dane Wigington, send to me. You can send that through uh, Scott and Steve, I mean, the both the Scots, or you can send it to me directly at fire, F-I-R-E, 3526 at AOL.com. And that's what he prefers to happen. Uh, Dane uh, Wigginton is dealing with the lawyers in his part, and I'm trying to take the load for Dane on the other end. So please address all your questions to me for Dane, 
about everything but the legal part. So thank you very much. And one other thing, Dane, would you like to explain to them that the UN is not really our friend? I yield the floor. Thank you. Well, certainly we have collaboration at a global level between any of these organizations. They're being increasingly pushed into a corner. The power structure is from many directions. I would argue they're becoming exponentially more dangerous as that pressure builds on them. And in regard to the manipulation of the UN, of course, the, all the countries involved with the UN are not necessarily a part of the overall malevolent agenda, but the fact that the UN can be completely orchestrated and manipulated by various global powers makes them a malevolent organization in many ways. So, again, it's a very complex scenario that we face, and there are many parts of this power structure. But if there's one single leap we could take to expose just how off the rails the train is, it's to expose this issue. This is this is the biggest elephant in the room by far. A very good answer on the UN. Uh, let me add to that uh, UN question, if I may. Um, the United Nations is a is a compact. It is a contract uh, between nations. And what I've been seeing here lately, and it might be uh, in contradiction to what people are thinking. Uh, the United States Corporation, Inc., who has had a major veto power with the UN, that is all gone by the wayside because of the economic collapse of uh, the United States Corporation, Inc. Uh, the United Nations uh, Assembly is not really listening to the United States anymore. Um, so there is a little bit of hope that uh, things can be corrected within the United Nations, providing we have the spokespeople who are, number one, knowledgeable and conditioned into certain issues like what Dane is, has exposed. Uh, we're seeing that in uh, the BRICS nation and 177, if not 188 countries who have allied themselves against United States Corporation, Inc., and the Federal Reserve, uh, number one, these countries aren't accepting Federal Reserve dollars for uh, debts on services anymore. So this is a good sign. And I think if the pleadings were presented appropriately uh, on the U.N. floor, we could... Uh, pretty much eradicate this particular problem and if it's 177 or 188 nations saying mm -mm, nope no more polluting our air uh, if you do you're going down uh, and, and you will not be a part of the reformation that's taking place and there is a valid legitimate reformation taking place as we speak all for the positive and this is going to come up in the next hour uh, so I, I just want to have people staying attuned to the next hour because you're going to hear some things that you may not have ever heard before uh, this is all about the positive energies that are, are actually taking hold uh, and it, it may um, may be part of the solution to this problem so, um, Dane, how are you doing on time? Uh, looks like we're just at your hour. Do you need to go, sir? Go, sir. Um, we can take, uh, if I can see if there's one last question somebody might have, then I, I, I uh, do have a schedule on air that's starting now, so I could try to take one more if there is another one, and then I'm, I have to well, excuse. Very good. Uh, well, do we have another question for, for Dane, or folks? Do we have another question for Dane? Uh, this is Wayne. May I yield? I mean, <laughs> yeah, yield. <laughs> yeah, you can yield, right? <laughs> Rain fog. It's caused by the chemtrails. I know it has to be. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Mr. Buckman. Just a very quick comment to the guy that asked the last question. I would be suspicious of anything from the UN because 
The UN is a communist-dominated organization, and no country can be a part of the UN unless they are bankrupt. And just because of that, of that, you know, they have been pressured, a lot of them have been pressured into coming into the UN, which is why we're also seeing the pro propaganda against Iran and various other places, Iran. Um, they want these countries in the UN, and no country can be a part of the UN unless they're bankrupt, therefore the wars. So I would be suspicious of anything coming from UN. And well, I, well, my response would... I would respond that I, I think that although that may have been the case, I think Mr. Curry has reactively defined the changes that are starting to take place. So I, I think it's important that we all keep taking continuous compensating settings so that we can monitor those changes and and uh, really correctly decide our, our uh, trajectories. So again, although things have been in a certain way for a while, a lot of changes are taking place at breakneck speed and, and the implosion of our biosphere at the top of that list. So my sincere gratitude to all on the line, again, geoengineeringwatch.org for any continuing data that you need. And I'm very grateful for everybody's participation and forgive me for uh, going on to another radio commitment now. It's Thank been you. an honor and our privilege, sir. Thank you very much, Dane. Thank you, Dane. Appreciate it. Thank you, Dane. We appreciate everything you're doing, brother. And then after that, uh, uh, we will uh, go into a whole other uh, mode of conversation. Um, uh, I will bring bringing on several people to uh, participate in that. So, yes, go ahead. Steve, I may. We've got a, not only a lot of background noise, but it's a lot of cutout, like a bad connection or something someplace. Either that or somebody doesn't want us talking about this stuff. And it's the same on this end. It's the same on this end. I tried several times to get through, and it was the same every time. Okay, let me, let me try this. It's been that way every week, so I'm suspicious that somebody either doesn't want us talking about this stuff or we have a bad connection someplace. Well, we have hit the Achilles tendon now. <laughs> I brought it. Have y'all found out about it? It's it's gone viral. Good. Okay. Anyway, this, uh, this is Wayne, and I yield. I just wanted to bring that to attention before we really get into things. There's just been a lot of breakup. Yeah. Thank you, Wayne. A am I breaking up? Yes. See, it sounds real good on my end. Um, I hear you pretty good. Yeah. Danny, you're you're coming in clear. Most most of us are coming in clear, but others are not. I know Dane sounds clear, John sounds a little rough, and Wayne sounds a little rough. Okay, yeah, the Dane. ones that are not sounding good, uh, tell your location. Uh, there just may not be any other way that it'll work. Do it, Rice. Okay, there, Mr. Rice. This is uh, Mr. Curry. I just dialed back in uh, and got a clear signal. No more breakup. So, uh, Mr. Bachman and anybody else experiencing that, just go ahead and dial back in. Okay, well, it seems to be working. <coughs> okay. Okay. Uh, the other option uh, I was just saying, Steve, as you got on, is I'll put it into Q and A mode and and just uh, unmute you and, and Dane and myself and. Uh, oh, okay. We'll we'll try that. Okay. Um. Uh, well, we'll we'll see how far we can get. All right, Steve. I want to let you know I did uh, call my good friend Vincent Finale from USAPrepares.com, and he posted this call on his website. So we may have a, a full house tonight. I hope. Well, uh, it's a uh, record attendance so far. What do we got? Uh, All right. 263. Awesome. I texted out to over 50 people, so hopefully they've all got on. Actually, I posted it on the uh, Morgellon sites on Facebook this afternoon. Great job, Wayne. Yeah. I'm sorry I didn't do more in mind. I, I, uh, we have people on from Mark as well. I didn't post it uh, too far and wide. We can see if we can zero in. Okay, Dane said he's not getting, he's getting breakup too. I got a lot of breakup off from you talking. So. Pennsylvania is bad. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but you sound clear, Mark. Yeah, you're breaking up, Dave. 
Yeah, right. So I'm going to experiment here, and maybe it'll solve the solution now that we're on um, uh, record. Uh, let me Amy. drop off and call back in. Okay. okay. Everything, everybody sounds good to me. Okay, Steve, you you sound better than the others. Yours is still breaking up, but it sounded a lot better than others. It's a, communi- it's a connection problem someplace, apparently. Yeah. Well, from where I am, everybody that's talking is breaking up really bad, and I'm in California. Oh, well, that explains that. <laughs> Hi, Charlene. Welcome to the car. Hi. Thanks. This is my first time, so I'm looking forward to it. Uh, good. Do we want to... Is there anything we can do, or should we... Uh, well, um, best we can. The, uh, uh, the only thing I can do uh, on this end that might help that is uh, uh, put us into Q&A mode, um, you know, and then... Uh, Unmute you, Dane, and and um, uh, Curry, and um, see if we can make the connection a little better than that. I, I hate to do it, but uh, who's on here? I'll listen. Please. Okay, and uh, Curry, you're on. Are you a lot of background noise? Hopefully, okay. anybody on the call can can move their calls so that the background noise can't be heard because there's quite a bit coming through now. Yeah. Uh, let's there. take a minute to shake out here. Yeah, that's yeah. much better. Getting a little bit better there. Uh, okay. If 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 I hold on, if you want me to roll forward, John, I'll blast off, and we can get any questions and stuff. Then to try to get as much done as we can, the time allotted. Okay, hold on. Let me get the uh, recording card on here. Steve, this conference is being recorded. Okay. Uh, welcome, everybody, to this uh, special call. I, uh, this call is going to be um, all about solutions. And uh, Lord knows we need a lot of them. So uh, we're going to put uh, Dane on here first and, and uh, let him uh, add whatever uh, uh, he wants to uh, in this uh, first hour or for as long as he needs to answer questions, to, um, uh, you know, take suggestions, whatever. Um. Good evening. Good evening. This is John from Texas. Hello, John. Dane will be with us tonight. He's got two radio shows. He's going to get on at right at uh, we start. So as soon as you get on, he'll only have one hour to speak. So we need to let him go first if everybody's okay with that. I'll uh, here whenever you need to go. Okay. We, we, well, as we soon as Dane gets on, uh, he'll let you know. And I just want you all to know that he doesn't have a lot of time tonight because he is between radio shows. So uh, thank you I'm very here, much. John. Whenever you say go, John, I'm here. Okay, Dane. Thank you very much. All right, James. Good. Uh, let me see here. Hi, Dane. Bill and Angela. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. Um, John, I don't know if you have a particular tack you want to take, but I can um, I can roll whenever you wish. I have a little bit of a rough connection on this, and I tried to get through a few times. It's still a little rough. Okay. Right. Well, just any time you want to take off talking, uh, spend your time wisely, please. 